Uh, good afternoon, guys. So today we'll look at this example just to understand um, the concept of friction. So now you have a box of bananas and it's weighing 13 newtons. You find this example in one of in one uh, in one of the handouts that I sent. So the thirteen newtons, then coefficient of static friction, which is mu s, is zero point four, and mu k is zero point two. So there were quite a number of questions. It was helping us to comprehend what was going on. So the first thing that you do before anything, so there will be forces that will be pulling that side. So now the first thing that you will need to do is to find out what is the normal force. So now, remember, if the force applied is horizontal, it means the weight is equal to the normal. The normal force, remember, is the force that acts perpendicular to the surface. So now, upward force equals downward force. So this is also 30 newton. So then you will be able to establish the static friction and also the kinetic friction. The static friction will be the max. Kinetic friction. So if you remember so well, friction equals mu times the normal. So for the static friction, the maximum static friction, the mu is 0 0.4. So if you multiply it with the 30, you will get your answer. So that is 0 0.4 times 30. So meaning the maximum static friction is 12 newtons. Then the kinetic friction, which is usually what we deal with, you will say 0 0.2 times the normal. The normal is 30, so that will be 6 newtons. So if you have that, so there will be, there will be a number of questions. So if someone mentions a force that is less, say if you apply, that's A. A you are applying say 7 Newton. So as you know, this thing is stationary. It's resting. So if you apply 7 Newton, you are going to equal the maximum static friction. So that means that when you apply 7 newton, you'll be opposed by the 7 newton. So the static friction will also be 7 newton, and there'll be no movement. Why won't there be movement? Because the force you have applied is less than the maximum static friction. The maximum static friction is the force that you must apply for you to get movement. So if you apply less, then there'll be no movement. So to get this thing started moving, you have to apply 12 newton. So to get it started moving, you have to apply 12 newton. Why 12 newton? Because that is the value of the maximum static friction. When you apply a force equal to the maximum static friction, then movement begins. Then to keep this moving at a constant speed, you must apply the kinetic friction which is 6 newton so if you applied force is 6 newton this will move at a constant speed remember constant speed is an equilibrium state uh, state also a body at rest at also, also an equilibrium state so what do we mean there it means the forces are balanced so if you apply a force greater than the 6 while it is already in motion Say you apply 10. So D, you apply 10 Newton and it's already in motion. Then there, my friends, you will get an acceleration. You will get it, an acceleration. Why? Because there now you get the net force, which is the applied force minus the kinetic friction. So this will be 10 minus 6 which will be 4 newton so what will be your value of the, the acceleration 
Remember, acceleration is equal to net force over the mass. So this will be 4 over the mass, if you know, so this will be 30 over 9.8. So you can go and finish that one and solve it. So meaning, that's how you go about it, guys. So simply, these are the things that I wanted you to understand for this level. Is if um, the force applied was on a rope, say the tension is still, maybe the angle there is 30 degrees. Then they ask us now, Mioke is 0.2, Mu S is 0.4. It's a bit more involving there. Yeah? So I'd rather not have a question because in both cases means you have a simultaneous. Why would you have a simultaneous? So you have 30 newton there. That was uh, your weight. So we can just assume that this is also 6 newton and that uh, the other one is 12 newton. Everything changes, even the value of the friction force. Why will everything change? Why? Because the normal force, guys, becomes equal to... Because this normal, you must add this to this for it to be equal to the weight. So to get the normal, you will say normal equals weight, which is 30, minus, say, T... sin 30 so you will see how involving that one becomes so to get it started moving where we said the question of static friction is this then we will say the force you have applied which is T cos 30 which is 0 0.8666 T will be equal to 0 0.4 times the normal then after some time when you establish what the normal is that's when now you find the static friction alone even after afterwards that's when you find the static friction alone and also the kinetic friction so it's a bit involving this and for this one they will tell you uh, what should be the tension to get started moving then you solve this simultaneous where the normal is as such. Then to move it at constant speed, you use 0 0.2 times normal. So it's a bit involving, which I, I'm sure will avoid. Meaning you can only tell you one situation. Say to get started moving, what must be the tension in, in the cable there? Then you use 0 0.2 times the normal. Then you equate. 0 0.2 times normal equals t cost 30. Then you solve the simultaneous. I know you don't like solving simultaneous, and these are not questions that will, will be bringing you, but then you have to be having ideas about everything. So this is all, I think, for this session. That's what I wanted to establish. We'll do another session to try understand understand some more. So I'm sure you've understood a bit of something as I've explained here. So remember, for you to have something moving at a constant speed, then the force you have applied is equal to the kinetic friction. And where should that force be? It should always be in the horizontal. So that is all, guys. Enjoy your day. And uh, stay safe. Thank you very much.